Hello and welcome to Retail Management, BUS 302. This is week four, lecture video number five. And this week we have been talking about retail strategy and location. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we've you kind of used a funnel approach where we've taken the topic very broadly and now we're moving to a very specific, to the more specific topics. So on the very broad side, we talked about the different types of locations, both planned, unplanned, and uh, non-traditional. We talked about how to select a location by looking at retail trade areas, thinking about our uh, consumer or target market, matching it to our strategy, thinking about various societal legal impacts, things like that. Uh, and as we then talked about uh, what do you do once you have a site selected? And we talked about that in our week four, our week four lecture four video, uh, the store design phase, what kind of store layout are you going to use? Uh, and how, you know, is it going to be exciting? How are you going to engage your consumer in those things? Uh, and then finally, in this video, what we really want to talk about is part of that store design is how are we allocating um, space right, to various merchandise categories, right? Because as you start thinking about this, uh, you have a limited amount of square footage to sell merchandise. And that space has to be productive. In other words, are you, you know, are you going to be measuring your sales per square foot or sales by linear foot? How are you going, you've got to be able to decide how to allocate merchandise and say, hey, this is how much space this thing gets, right? because this space has to be productive, right? So in getting inventory turnover, in other words, how many times do we sell our inventory? And we think about turnover, it is the number of times we sell out completely in theory. So how many times are we getting rid of all of our goods and restocking, right? You want that number to be as high as possible. And so making sure as we start thinking about these merchandise and cat merchandise categories, you want to, you know, probably generate more or allocate more space to high inventory turnover. And if you have a category that needs or some merchandise that needs a lot of display area, maybe you don't want to give it as much space because that's that display area is, you know, it might not be the most productive. In other words, it's not, you may not sell as much per square foot because it takes up space. So you got to think about these things. So again, other things you want to think about as you talk about uh, space management, what about the um, the location within the store? How much demand is it, right? Uh, do you want, what do you want in that strike zone? And the strike zone is really where people walk in that first impression, like what kind of impression are you getting of a store when you walk in? And, and that's huge. And I, I laugh because when you, uh, when you look at the history of the world's largest retailer, which is Walmart, uh, Mr. Sam was an incredible merchandiser, an incredible retail entrepreneur and everything else. And so when he opened one of his first stores down in, I think it was Harrison, Arkansas, uh, he had donkey rides going on in the parking lot and he got a great deal on watermelons, right? So all these watermelons were there and, and everything else. And David Glass was um, is was actually the second CEO of Walmart. But prior to going to work for Walmart, he worked for a competitor. And so he tells the story of going to see this new store down in Harrison, Arkansas being opened. And he gets there. It's a hot summer day. And there's kids on donkeys and riding the donkeys outside. And don he says, you know, donkeys are doing what donkeys do that, you know, so they need to go. So they relieve themselves in the parking lot and it's running through. And it was so hot that some of the watermelons burst and the people are walking through this. And it's just a mess. And he said, what I saw was people walking through all this stuff into the store and getting the store all dirty, right? He had a lousy first impression and said that, I don't think Walmart will ever become much of anything. That was his first impression. Now, later on, David Glass does go to work for Walmart, and he actually ends up being the second CEO, the first CEO after Mr. Sam retires. So, right, so that can, you know, that, but it's hard to get past that first impression. So, when you think about that strike zone, when somebody walks into your store, what are they seeing? What are they feeling, right? Uh, where do you want impulse merchandise, right? This is, you know, those impulse products where people are just going to, oh, I didn't know I needed that, right? So where are you going to put that? And, you know, the special merchandise. You've got to think about space management, right? 
So when you think about grocery stores, right, they often place the produce. So if you think most grocery stores you walk into, you walk into and boom, in the strike zone right there, the first thing you see is this produce. Why? Because it's visually appearing. There's lots of visual, it's visually appealing. There's lots of color and everything else. And generally there's maybe some good sense and everything else, right? It makes you get a little hungry and, and you know, who wouldn't, as a grocery store, you want your consumers hungry when they walk through because, you know, you might sell more food, right? So this idea that how grocery stores get you in and they put the color and everything else right there, right in the front, it's really, it's strategic. It's really important. So the way that you locate your merchandise, right? So um, where you encourage un unplanned and uh, planned purchases, right? So maybe sometimes you have some weird, uh, placement where things just don't like, why did I do that? But it, it generally, if you use, and we'll talk about this later on uh, in the course, when you use technology for your choice of merchandise, right? So sometimes you may want to put things that don't seem to go together in the same area because of uh, impulse sales, right? So are you going to use planograms, right? Planograms. Uh, where every piece of merchandise has a set location. What about, um, and a lot of times you'd create these plan plan that planograms using a virtual store simulation where you can design it all on a computer. Um, you know, there's lots of different things that you can do to allocate space. Now, again, space management. They, Whole Foods likes to use complementary, complementary categories. So like you have apples and cheese next to each other. Uh, you know, because it can bring, um, it, it can maybe get some ideas and maybe get some unplanned purchases, right? So that might be one of those things where you bring those things together. Also, one of the things, this is a more of a high tech area where Microsoft has developed these sensors so that you can create heat maps of where shoppers are interacting with products, meaning they're touching, picking it up, putting it down, putting it right. And the red zones uh, are hot zones where shoppers, uh, shoppers are touching the most, yellow are, is less and blue, not at all. So this, you can use this to see how you can, can you know, place your products and everything else. Um, so that you get that red zone, right? And this is in a grocery aisle, Right, get that red zone right about eye level and everything else, so that consumers have a really easy time of finding things. Right, so this is a great use of technology. Um, last thing we want to say when you're thinking about space management, also when you're designing your stores, right? The key here, some people think, well, I just need if I had more space, right? Bigger is not always better, so that's important to know because that space that you once you have more space, you need to make it productive. So you need to find ways just to improve. Uh, if you you could probably do better if you can improve your supply chain supply chain management, right? The key in that is because again, bigger is not always better. If you have more stuff, you need to have more backup stock and everything else. And your back room doesn't help make you money. So what you want to do is have a smaller back room, which generally means limited merchandise. So that's where you want to improve your supply chain. Uh, also, if you have bigger storage, you're probably going to have more rent, higher rent, higher and, and probably more payroll costs, all these things. Right. So smaller stores have less cost. So this would be a reason to keep things small. Um, the thing is, when you have smaller space, right, customers generally complain, oh, I have less selection and there's not it's not as exciting. Right. So finding that that balance is really hard. So the way that you allocate your space is going to be huge. And the way that you design your store is huge. So all of these things really relate to the store location. And it's really one of the first steps in implementing your retail strategy, which we talked about in week three. So um, as we look ahead, Right. Let's look ahead to week five briefly. What we're going to be talking about next week is how technology can be used to help to be used to help us implement our retail strategy. So we'll talk about some very specific things with technology next week. With that, have a great week and we'll see you all in the course.